Hello and welcome back to this back 11 coverage of the first round feature card MPO T-Box media coverage of the 2023 Taupo Nui Atea North Island Disc Golf Championships held in the beautiful Taupo in the North Island of New Zealand. I'm Henry Pearson and I'm joined by my good friend Jake Brennan on commentary. Thank you Henry. And here we go. Same people, different 11. Max first up. Levi. Max led the way in our first half. He played very tidily there for some time and then incurred a three putt on the eighth, but seems to be hitting his stride at this stage with par fours ahead. Sebastian struggled on the front ten with a couple of doubles to finish it off. Um, he'll be looking to set things right in the back 11 and so too will Jay Watkinson. Very, very slow start by a lot of these players' calibre, I think. They'll be looking to get a lot more birdies and a lot less bogeys. Indeed. Conditions a little bit damp, so we'll see how things pan out for our next 11 holes. Hole 11 is a par 4. It's 163 metres. This is one of the changes to the tournament layout from the 2022 edition of this tournament. Had been a par 3 at the same length, it's now been lengthened to a par 4, so a little more gettable for our players. No out of bounds or hazards to contend with, it's merely a wide open fairway followed by a narrowing um, approach to this green. A little bit of a low ceiling to navigate before entering the circle. Players will be looking most certainly to have at least a birdie putt to begin their back 11. Absolutely crazy par three. If anyone has the power to reach it, it'll be Max. Ooh. And that is a ripper of a line to start it on. There was a bit of downwind on this hole, so to get something high and wide seems like a good idea, and that'll be no less than circle three away from the basket. Henry, do you think he just went Max Power on that one? I think he went Max Power, Jake, both in terms of uh, Maxine Power and Maximum Power. Or well, Maxine Maximum Power, actually. <laughs> Do you concur, Jake? Oh, I absolutely think he, he has got Maximus Power on it. Well, I feel like that anyway. Jay getting quite far up there. I mean, he's going to be fine for his approach shot, really. It's, it's not Max Power, but it's, uh, it's distance. I'm trying to think of funny ways to use the other players names now but I can't yeah. it's too much to think of well we've got Seb, Levi and Jay the very standard names I feel yeah, like yeah they're not exactly common syllables in other words are they so you guys are off the hook we can't we can't think of anything we'll get back to you on that one or or just leave a comment below and we'll put it into some of the material Jay's on lead card enough I feel like we need to, and so is Levi that we need to come up with something We'll call it a work in progress at this rate, Jake. Sebastian's one to have enough power to get up there with Maxime on this hole, but finds a tree early, as he has done a couple of times, frankly, in this round. Still committed to the mere polo shirt attire, despite wind, rain and cool temperatures, and that is flirting with that natural bunker on the left but he throws it far enough to rip over the rest of it. He just sort of kept on pushing and then just and then just dropped. It only looked like a mid-range from Seb, but he, as I said, he does have a big arm. As Levi squares up his Kia into the one Guardian tree on that side, but he's still got a mid-C2 putt. It looks like an envy from Jay. This disc, if you ever have a chance to look at Jay Watkinson's envy, it does not resemble anything like a frisbee. Um, it's more of a morphed bit of plastic that seems to glide in somewhat of a fashion like a beaten envy. It's uh, quite a work that he just seems to bag and throw and, and throw towards the basket so he keeps on throwing it. A sculpture perhaps is it? Yeah. yeah. 
and Maxime with a jump putt from the knee all that he required to approach the screen massive advantage Maxime has really over most of the MPO field with the extent of the distance he can get off the tee to leave as many approaches like the one we just saw where he's just got jump putt ranging in to par fours I'll just your attention to um, Seb's birdie there that was a, a really good three a good putt to finish that off Jay Watkinson following in suit with another birdie good to see those two boys starting to uh, turn the tide on our back 11 after what will both be uh, front tends to forget Yeah, I think disc golf's always a lot more fun when you're playing to your potential and, and playing the game that you like to play. I mean, everyone gets frustrated, I'm sure, when they're hitting trees and duffing discs and, yeah. But anyway, here we go, moving on, hole 12, another par 4, 12 par 4s on this layout, it always seems like a par 4. Um, double Mando, uh, players will try and shoot straight up the guts, low ceiling, if anything um, pushing straight or even hysering out to the left for those right handed backhand just open up the approach to the pin a little bit more. Uh, there is an OB green long, however most of us uh, mere mortals it doesn't uh, play a part into our shot uh, selection. The green is a little guarded so I think the closer that you can push the, the golf green the better uh, approach angle that you'll have. Um, low ceiling um, into the into the basket here but let's see how it plays out Henry that we will Jay surprise surprise Maxime is throwing his favorite force off the tee this tee box interesting because it does traverse a little bit uphill as you get to the top of the tee block and kind of counters that low ceiling shot that's required to get through the double mando Max picking the only part there that isn't the low ceiling, so my whole breakdown was just rubbish. Perhaps you should follow that line. Jay with a Halo Destroyer. I think this hole played into a headwind, if I'm not mistaken, Jake, which might be why the Halo Destroyer was the disc of choice for Jay. This is an S-Line PD Nordic Phenom from Sebastian and clatters into the left-hand side of the Mando. Yeah, Seb's had a bit of a rough round, but you can still see he's fighting. He's got that, he's got that in him and he still wants to play well. That's a beautiful line. I don't know what this that is from Levi, but it's certainly holding straight for most of its flight. RPM sponsored player, you'd think it would be a Kahu of some sort. I thought Kahoos might be too flippy to sort of hold that line in that wind but mind you there is quite a range of stabilities in the Kahoo depending on run. This looks very far left. And there is OB lurking over there. Slips past it. I think he'll be fine now. Oh, oh he does no. too. He's OB. And Sebastian's woes continue. So Max has actually found himself behind this tree. He's going to have to go pattern pending. We're seeing a few different shots out of him. And there's that mobility stance again. sneaks through that'll be a just circle Levi in a prime position here leaving just a forehand approach forehand probably is the option um, I think the forehand opens the green up and uh, you don't really play into too many of those trees on the right however Levi throwing that OB he's cooked it a little bit left that might be the same disc he threw off the tee and it again held that line a little too long Jay also going forehand but looking to make the correction. Well, this is certainly a more overstable disc than I think the one Levi threw. This is a Orbit Fallon. 
and he almost makes the mistake just on the other side. A little bit of work still required from Sebastian to tidy up after going OB on the hole. So Levi saying it all there really. Um, after a hot start to our back 11, um, our players once again struggling. Oh, that was a pretty good look from Jay, an inch or two low, clambering into the cage. And Sebastian, I think this is to save five. Oh, that was a lot of chain to bounce out. So that will be Sebastian's fourth double of the round thus far and with most of our top players setting a reasonable pace up there with Maxime he's now put himself quite a ways back already at this very early stage of the event Sebastian a really capable player so tough to see him quite this far back early on Yeah, it's difficult sometimes when you can do a bit of a funk and then things that you think happen and then they just don't happen you get a few spit outs like that and easy to get your head down so well done keeping his keeping his chin up but here we go hole 13 par 4 again 210 meters uh so really really interesting thought-provoking hole here so what you've got is you've got two ob zones with a safe landing zone in between players will opt whether they want to play short with a mid-range or a putter or whether they want to attack the second landing zone uh, in the middle there. All the players on this card I'm sure are going to try and go past and maybe fade out to the left side, uh, left of where the drones are flying now and then it will leave a relatively routine upshot onto this mountainous basket perched up on a step. I thought you were going to go full English on us there at the end, Jake. It sounded increasingly formal, that <laughs> whole preview. Well, oh, thank you, Henry. I think um, now that uh, we are living together, perhaps your way of speaking is somewhat brushing off on my speak. Oh, really? I don't know whether to take that as a compliment or a, or a matter of concern. <laughs> Anyway, back here, Jay Watkinson throwing on the tee. That is very far right on this hole. But it could be so far right that he's in a safe position. And I think he knows that there's a little cheeky grin yeah. right on Jay's expression there. So Jay and I actually played a, a practice, you were there too actually, we all played a practice round and Jay was telling us how he was going to hyzer out to the left so that was completely off his line. Levi has done the same thing. That's quite strange because Levi is certainly throwing a beefy uh, driver there off the tee, a Halo Destroyer. And those banners in front of us would suggest that the wind is downwind or at least cross right to left. God, this is a munch, isn't it? Wow. What a crush out of Seb. That is massive. That would be 155-ish from the tee. If you could walk up the fairway and put your disc somewhere, maybe it might be two metres to the left of that. That's, that's position A there. Levi opting for the backhand approach, Jay going the other way with a forehand, that's really got to get up though to get over the OB, and it would seem that he just made it onto the other side. Max opting to go wide with a stable disc and skip in towards the basket. 
And who knows, that's the way to play the whole. So Jake, at this stage we're traversing a stretch of seven par fours in a row and this would be right in the middle of that stretch. How are you feeling about your round at this point and are these par fours for your game attackable enough to feel like you're starting to make up some ground on the field? Well, good question Henry. Um, I felt like for my game these par fours suited suited me throwing that 110 to 120 hyzer I thought would give me a, a pretty good shot however my round looked completely different to these guys I think I got three birdies in the first four holes and then parred everything until hole 20 which is an outrageous round in my opinion um, boring but um, you're a guy that's known for taking eight birdies and seven bogeys on a round and three pars so to have so many pars like you're describing is a real rarity i love it how you went the eight and seven that way so thanks for that that puts me one down so you're welcome yeah more than happy to take the one down right um but i think a lot of these players as well i mean this course should really suit their game i mean it's a 210 meter par four nothing really in the way um most of these players would say this is what hole that i want to birdie and now that we're coming to the North Island champs, they just, they're taking doubles, they're taking bogeys, pars, birdies, everywhere. And it's just, it's more of a mix-up scorecard than I think all the rest of us expected to see. Oh, Seb. So that was the safe par. There's perhaps a lack of confidence starting to brood in Seb's round, which is a bit of a shame because he's such a good player. We move forward to hole 14, again a par 489 metres. Players traverse down this hill, which uh, makes for a significant elevation change to a landing zone at the base of the upslope you can see at the front of camera. Then they'll traverse up the upslope towards a green that's just perched on the left, nestled in amongst some small trees. Uh, players will be looking to throw a pretty reasonable bomb down this hole to try and get into a position to throw a mid-range or a soft fairway driver into the green. Left is where the trouble is found off the tee. Right will give you a very open look to this green. Henry, I'm excited to see what Max does on this hole. That is crushed. Could be a little bit low. He's got the power to get up the hill if he wanted to, but he doesn't quite get there. This is my preferred line, the big wide hyzer up and around that tree. I think it just takes that early left play out of the equation, and as you only push as far left as Jay pretty much has just there. Do you oh, take okay. that wide line or go the other way? Totally agree, I think it's the more safer play um, I don't even think you need to get up the hill to access the birdie. I mean, even getting yourself a uh, good footing on the flat ground, I think, um, is almost an advantage unless you can get up to the top of the hill. <laughs> there aren't many players that are going to have reached that top of that hill. It's a good 135 to push to the crest of the hill, um, even longer perhaps. And obviously the further you traverse to the left of the fairway, the longer it takes to get up the hill. But a good nudge from Levi to get up there. He'll have a look at the basket while playing his upshot. Jay reaching for the Orbit Fallon once more. And that looks like it's got a bit too far left on him. It's still a hole that you, you walk down and you throw half your bag at it just for fun. And even putters you just throw and just see what happens. Did, did you throw a few shots in your practice round? I think so. I can't quite recall, but I can imagine I would have enjoyed throwing a couple of bombs off here and seeing how far down the fairway I could have gotten. 
Max Aim is just an absolute prime position. Wow. A bit of a luxury just seeing the basket on your upshot on this one, really. Look, Max staring down the basket. The basket looks scared. Very intense. It's interesting to see Maxime's disc selection throughout the round because he's really leaning on three overstable molds. The Force, the Splice, and the Mutant, which are maybe the Force is the only exception. The other two are absolute beefcakes. But he's pumping them on Heiser, Anheuser that are pushing out again at the end. Um, I wonder if it's just a comfort thing or if his form kind of suits that sort of adaptability. You got any thoughts to add? Potentially is that. There's also maybe they don't fly as stable for him just because he is max power. Um, but also there's a little bit of wind around. I mean, it's not showing it in this graphic, but I, I do feel on the day that there was a bit of wind and if there is wind I do feel stabling up just gives you that little bit more consistency and you know what the disc is going to do but I have heard that he he does like to throw over stable in, in, in general having not played with him myself mm. um, yeah I can't comment too much further than that a couple of good birdies there from our lead card and we move forward to hole number 15 it's a par 4 it's 176 meters we Head back up the hill towards the T-block of the last hole and enter a landing zone on this golf fairway in front of frame now. Then the boys will be uh, forced to play a shot that pushes to the right at the end of its flight up the hill um, to a reasonably open green but it is guarded with an OB area on the right hand side. Uh, the guys will be looking to throw something as long and as far uh, left as possible to open up the entrance to this green and uh, reduce the need for a strong curving shot to approach the green. Maxime with a massive turnover force to begin for the group. Wow. To get a force going that much left to right with that distance is tough. Jay's picked his most understable driver in the bag. That's a um, RPM Atomic Kahu XG. It's flipped on him a bit much, but not the end of the world. He'll still have a reasonable look from down the hill. I think Levi's picked the same disc, Kahu XG. Levi taking a little bit wider route, but and he actually looks like he hides it out there. Jack, what disc did you opt for off this tee? Disc of choice off this tee was a Ballista Pro, trying to throw a little bit lower than Seb did there, but um, it's the disc that um, one Henry Pearson, yourself Henry, uh, gave to me. That'd be me. It's um, it's one of my go-to turnover shots. Um, I bogeyed the hole. <laughs> How did you do it? <laughs> Found the OB off the <laughs> tee. Uh, second shot on the oh, upshot. Yeah, right. there is OB lurking to the right. So, I mean, yeah, uh, it does factor in the players' minds as they're approaching the green. Just the early uh, heisinger out, um, finishing right. So. Jay making the mistake I think a lot of people make is trying to play it on the safer side but uh, leaving it a bit long. How did you feel on this hole Henry? I like the hole. Um, I love the bomb off the tee and to have something rip over in the middle of its flight and start to push it right down the fairway is pretty cool. Um, then it obviously allows for a forehand approach shot which I quite enjoy as well. And Seb has played it to perfection thus far. Hopefully he can catch that putt in and make a birdie to kind of start to bounce back a bit. He pretty much played it just how you said, Henry. Gee, that's very tidy from Maxine. For a guy who I don't think we've seen throw a forehand yet, Jake, to park it from that angle with a backhand is pretty special. See, I would have thought that some of the holes on this course required a two-way player in order to take advantage of them. I can confirm that um, you 
do not have to throw a single forehand on this course if you do not want to being a strictly backhand player myself i forgot there for a second actually that you were were a backhand only player <laughs> and you did quite well actually over the weekend jack yeah if you i think a lot of the holes if you're just looking to par them you can play right or left however i i do agree like a lot of the holes if you want to birdie a forehand does help a lot or having an absolute crusher of a backhand where you can just throw over everything like max does maxime and seb uh, make their birdies on the hole and we move on to hole 16. par 3 150 meters very challenging hole um, so you've got a couple of ob zones short in the bunker and on the golf green however these won't really come into play because everybody has the power to throw over top of these it's only about 60 meters past them then it starts getting a bit more challenging um, as the drone flies up the fairway um, quite narrow so you need something that pushes straight and finishes to the right uh, there is the guardian bush um, so anything landing on top of the hill here uh, will give you a birdie look max is also going to go backhand on this and he looks like he's going to crank over that is a dismania instinct fairway driver and he's pushed it just far <laughs> past the green that's a rip to get back there with a what well, I, I think an instinct's a seven speed jack so he's put a bit of juice on it seb trying to follow in his footsteps but making the mistake i'm sure many players have in heisering out early there is a fence line ob on the left but to be honest it is guarded by a lot of trees so you would have to be very unlucky to push through and find you find the ob there Ooh. jay pumping one up the middle and going along of the hill henry i thought this was a challenging hole but everyone is making it look easy very easy thus far that was a pretty special shot all of our boys so far will have looks for birdie levi with a minty green picker picker it's coming back it's got to sit down a little bit and he'll also have a putt for his birdie too he's also deep a lot gets made in the rpm world about the the minty picker picker um, the stable list of all the picker pickers i'm told have Indeed. you thrown one henry i used to have one actually and i sold it because i'm not uh, accustomed to throwing the picker picker i prefer a slightly deeper dish mold for my um, understable fairway driver so i opted for a different mold but nevertheless they're still feel pretty sweet in the hand and they're very popular I think the Pika Pika is one of the funnest discs that um, RPM have got and you can throw rollers, hyzer flips, turnovers, it's just a, yeah, a really fun disc in my opinion. Jay's starting to put together a good little back nine now with three birdies in the last six holes and keeping up pace almost with Maxime who's four down through the back 11 thus far five down if you count the tenth Seb to save par yeah Max is starting to separate himself from the card a little bit really especially in the last three holes as you say we move forward to hole 17 a downhill par 3 97 meters uh, this hole is poised with a mando on the left hand side immediately off the tee block forcing the players to throw to the right but then is lined with an ob area on the right hand side of the fairway forcing players to keep their disc straighter and longer throughout the early parts of its flight before hyzering to the right at the end a chippy forehand that finishes late is a good option backhand is quite a challenging shot on this hole given 
the undulations on the fairway, but we'll see how Maxime, given he's a back end only player, traverses it. I don't know how you felt about this hole, Henry, but in my opinion, this was one of the one of the two holes that I actually preferred last year's layout with. I thought last year's one was very challenging. This is very challenging as well, and it's, it's a nice hole, don't get me wrong, but I, yeah, I, I liked last year's hole. Yes, was, just for context for our viewers, Jake's referring to this hole being played from a tee pad about 20 metres further back than where it's situated at the moment. And the Mando was still in play, if I remember. Was the OB in play? No. So it did make for a much longer um, shot. It was approximately 120, 125 metres to the basket. The Mando probably came into play a little more. Definitely, definitely. But plenty of discs would have ended up on the right hand side. Discs ended up everywhere. That's cutting it quite fine. Oh, and no graphic showing up there, so I think Seb is safe. We've seen Levi throw this disc a bit around the course today, and I have a feeling it could be a color glow fiber, but I'm not sure. And that is how you do it. A beautiful shot there from Levi. He is parked along with I think it was Jay that threw the first one didn't that look easy how we threw it it looked like he put about 10 percent power through it and it just came and sat in circle one Jay Watkinson calling for that one to get in there it's good to see that um, the cards still support each other you know and they just sort of Know, legitimately want want the best for each other and you know it, everyone to do well on the card so we do hope that you're enjoying this t-box media coverage of the north island championships for this and more coverage from events around new zealand be sure to keep up to date with t-box media releases and subscribe to the youtube channel Plenty of tournaments to go for the remainder of the 2023 season and you'll know that T-Box will be there to capture it all. Some exciting tournaments coming up as well. Brook Brave. Um, yeah, just to name a few. There's Bottle Lake Open, yeah. But here we go, uh, focusing here. Hole 18, par 3, 97 metres. Plays like 50 metres with the downhill, very downhill. Um, and what you want to do is throw a forehand straight out there, finishing hard right, or a turnover backhand if you dare. Um, the pin is a bit guarded uh, by the trees around. Players will obviously look to play to the mouth or crash the trees to give themselves a putt. So this tournament being played at the end of New Zealand's summer season um, in mid to late March and as we kick on to autumn as Jake alluded to before a couple more um, tournaments are to be had before we settle in and hibernate for the winter um, the Bottle Lake Open uh, comes up this weekend I think MDG our friends at MDG media have been down to paradise um, for the Paradise Plates in Glenorchy, Queenstown um, shortly after this tournament and uh, then we move on into some of the winter events I think Middle Earth Open in Wellington um, there's a tournament at Waitawa I think if I recall yep, Jake. you're correct yes and that Waitawa. might see us through I think until spring arises again in August September Seb going very wide with this one, looking for it to swing back. No skip. Just a dig and an anti-skip actually. So the New Zealand tour season runs from the middle of 2022, beginning in roughly June, July, until the same time in 2023. So our players have 
pretty much played most of the events available during that tour season and have racked up various tour points and I think we're coming to um, the end of the season now Jake where the leaders are jostling for final uh, points and positions do you have any sense for who is up there on the peak of the tour points leaderboard? I actually do not have a have a sense of it I, I mean you'd have an idea I mean the same names are going to be there Jay Watkinson's going to be up there Joseph Berry Jack O'Sullivan Levi Stout I'm sure all these names are going to feature some point you'd be you'd be safe to bet on one of those four yeah the only other one I might add to that list is Conor McKinstry who has yeah. captured a couple of wins Absolutely. one here in Topor in September of last year we move forward hole 19 it's about 301 meters uh, players have roughly 70 metres in before they enter the woods line here where they'll need to throw something over stable for a right hand backhand that's going to carve into the tree line push as far left as they can up into this guarded green there's a couple of alternative options here like a forehand roller but a safe bet is a low driven high speed driver with plenty of highs of skip angle as the rain sets in again for the third or fourth time in the round. Henry, at 101 metres, and just the way this hole is shaped, this is a tough get, isn't it? This is like, to get a driver low, skippy, and penetrating, um, it's going to be tough. Well, I didn't mention that there's a first cut of rough that sets in pretty much as those tree line, that as you enter the tree line, so if that uh, disc doesn't quite get on enough angle early enough, it can get pulled up by that thicker grass. So though Levi will be in the middle of C2 there, he's going to struggle to have a look for his birdie. Surprise, surprise, Max leaning on his force. So just a reminder, this is a 21 hole layout, so we still have the 19th, 20th and 21st holes to traverse before closing out our first round. And a couple of challenging holes to finish, frankly, Jake. Some score separators coming up, absolutely. Just just on that, Max going backdoor, I didn't even consider the backdoor hyzer, and then Seb going high. I don't know about this play. That is, that seems crazy there's in my opinion there's no way through there i don't think there's a line at all up there it seems well <laughs> maybe that's why he's throwing it that it is a bit of a luck shot oh gee that's got a chance a little long almost made us eat our words there henry indeed didn't he I believe i very cut off by those trees but does well to get around them excellent birdie from Maxime and he has really pulled away on this back nine clean since the 10th and plenty of birdies to boost his round ahead so he gets to eight down which is a bit of a blistering score in these conditions with two holes to go Jay. So Levi and Jay not having their best days thus far. I know they're capable of putting together scores in the likes of Maxime's range that we're seeing. How do you build your better game? Reps. Focus. The right equipment. Zuka, disc golf carts for a better game. So we go hole 20, par 4 again, 205 metres. This is another score separator, really challenging hole as you can see by the initial tight tunnel. And even if you do get through the tight tunnel, there's this tree in the front that you have to get up and over. 
uh, and then hysering out to the left. There is OB long if you manage to get up a gap and flip something over. Uh, where this cart is, is an ideal landing zone and the more that you can push further forward, the easier their upshot is going to be. Um, if you make it to here, and that's if you make it to here, fair few players do, um, then you've got about a 70 or 80 meter upshot. Your upshot consists of a straight to hyzer finish around the corner and finishing hard in towards the pin here. I mean, if you make it onto the green in two on this one, you're doing pretty well and you've got a birdie putt. Um, if you take par here, I don't think you're losing too many strokes on folks. Max going to his force again and playing the hole just how it should be played. That's an unbelievable position to be in after his first shot. I think Max was actually listening to my, my breakdown there, Henry, and he threw it just, just where I said to throw it. Oh, was he? Yes. Are you forgetting perhaps that this is post-production coverage, Jake, and that this was filmed roughly two weeks ago? Oh, we can always dream. <laughs> Jay making the mistake I'm sure many people have made and that's uh, hitting a tree off the initial gap and, and finding himself in the rough. Statistically this hole makes for a great separator with a few birdies, many pars, a couple of bogeys and a couple of doubles or worse posted so quite an array of scores mm. captured on this hole. What was your play on this one Henry? Well, getting it out of the gap here off the tee is the um, initial check mark that you'd like to tick off. And that is really challenging uh, now for Seb. Um, and then after that, I think it's just, uh, I feel content to scramble for a par, which I think I did at least once in the final round. Seb hitting two trees before he, and he isn't, he's not even out of the gap yet. This has been a rough round for Seb. He's only 25 metres off the tee at this point and throwing a chippy forehand. So this is sort of from bad to worse for Seb. He could still save single bogey from there. He does have that high bomber kind of hyzer that we've seen him pull out to scramble with every now and again in the round. So it could be prime for it. Oh boy. Jay coming up a bit short there, that's going to leave a test into the green. There we go, there's that bomber. Does he get round? No. He's cut it off a little too early. It looked actually quite good, but it just needed to push that extra 5-10 metres forward before starting to cut into the gap that is the entrance to the green. And this is a safe play going quite wide and around that guardian tree on the corner. And after all that, we're finally at Max's drive. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is a tilt. And it looks like he's got right in there. It'll be interesting to see where he landed. He hasn't got any single. He's waiting to see. Jay looking up. Wow, I don't even know what kind of shot that was that he had to manufacture in there, but well done, he's out and he's okay. got a look. Well, Jake, at this point I'd caught up to Jay to carry the bag for him for the last couple of holes. And on that shot in particular, he had a window that was no bigger than two feet by three feet uh, above his head that he opted to throw the backhand through. I suggested that it might be a bit too risky but he felt confident in it and ended up getting into a position to save bogey. Here we go and watch our players take some longer bids. Jay for his bogey look.
Jay's putting is, in my opinion, this is something we've become accustomed to seeing is when he's in inside 10 and he's got the putter in hand, it's just in. But um, I think that's been the difference for him in this round. There's been, from memory, there's probably been about four putts that he's sort of doinked. And, um, you know, the difference between two down and six down can be lead card, chase card, or, or lead card in with a shot of winning, or, or just playing for a good position in the tournament. So mm. I think he's just been a bit off in this round. Yeah, most of those putts came quite early in the round, didn't he, when he doinked it on two and three. Um, but he seems to have come right a little bit later on in the round, and we move on to the final hole of our 21-hole layout here at the Topol Golf Club. It's a par 4, 191 metres. It's a two-shot hole, frankly. Players will play a drive to the corner up here on the left uh, in order to push far enough around this tree on the right-hand side of the screen that is a Mando. Then they'll throw something low and straight up to a elevated basket. A punter green is on your right hand side and an OB fence runs all the way down the left. This is a true two shot hole par four. Two shot hole Henry. I don't know. This is a hard two shot hole in my opinion my friend. Well you'd think. These guys are probably going to make it look easy but I found it was a hard two shot hole. I certainly agree and when I say true two shot I'm meaning you're never going to have a look at it from a jump putt or anything of that nature. Absolutely not. Yeah. Did you did you get the three on this one? I didn't. No, I threw a straight fairway driver up to the corner and had a long look, but never really got into a position where I had a chance for birdie. And yourself? Um, I clipped the last tree on the way in and had to lay up for my par. But um, I think four on this hole. I mean, it's, I, I wasn't unhappy. Looks like you're in the background there, just adding your words of wisdom to Jay and supporting the teammate for Winnow. Don't know how many words of wisdom I've got in my repertoire. I could probably count them on one hand, Jay. But that one didn't look like too bad of a shot. And Jay's out in the open. Seb, hopefully with a strong finish to Maybe claw one back on his round. He's tucked that a bit. The further right you go, the more likely you are to have a real challenging shot to push around the Mando. Yeah, that's going to be tough. I think he's just going to lay out for his par from there. Levi, even though he pushed out left, he actually had a shot at the pin, didn't he? Yeah, it was a. it's a long, low shot from there. He's a good 115 away from the basket. Maxime is maybe 105. He's going for it too. And that's a beautiful line. What a shot. Classic two shot hole. One, two, putt. So with that uh, approach, Maxime leaves himself with a chance to move to double digits on the first round, which is a very promising start to his campaign at the North Island Championships. And Jay carves a beauty around the corner, but we don't see it dropping. But he should be able to make his par from there without concern. Seb playing his third and will need to get up and down from here to safe par and that's not going to cut the mustard i think he just lost a little bit of focus in that and coming down the stretch long day 21 holes for the course and i think what we say 12 par fours i mean that's a long time to stay focused in golf and i think for a lot of players you know you're thinking about north island champs for so long and then you finally come out here and then it's 21 holes for the day and, and it's easy to just let that mental lapse come in coming down the stretch and especially when you've you're you're at plus 11 on the day so i think i think seb was just a bit of victim of that seb not to be discounted as a um, a player of great standing in his own right he's finished uh, very well in some of the tournaments to date this year sixth in the dismania garden city open south island championships seventh at the national championships in invercargill third at the queenstown uh, classic uh, earlier in February so some very good positions and some strong fields this is just simply an off day for Seb 
speaking of off days I think what could have been for Max that's about three putts that he's missed now he could be easy 11 12 13 down indeed he had that three putt on the eight hole from the edge of circle to make a bogey and has missed a couple since then hasn't he Jake so it could have been a particularly exceptional round but at nine down it seems more than likely that Maxime will lead the charge going into round two and that concludes our feature card for round one at North Island Championships if you enjoyed the uh, coverage please do like and subscribe um, like I always say we always really appreciate it and if you um, enjoyed the coverage please follow us for round two Jake, a pleasure as always to join you on commentary to see the best talents of the country tackle the Topol Golf Course temporary disc golf course layout for the first round of the North Island Championships. Let's look at those scores. Nine down, two down for Levi Stout and Jay. Sebastian Shooter. 12 over and here we go look at the scores max no doubt easy shooting the hot score of the day simon feezy awesome to see him back up on the leaderboard with seven down jacko familiar name and connor wow and then we go down to chase card uh, jake mark levi and jay for this one uh t box will be covering uh the chase card so uh, a few of our players will feature again on there and some new faces so come back and join us for round two. Jake, Mark, Levi and Jay will see you on round two coverage from Spa Park. T-Box Media signing out for round one feature card coverage here at the North Island Championships. We'll see you shortly.